Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. My name is Mark Spencer. I'm your host, and our guest today is the illustrative Brian Gary. Wow, what, what am I going to paint something today? <laughs> I, now I have no idea. After what you've started doing, you're starting going in different directions, and you are become unpredictable. I'm a Renaissance man of I digital so. media. All right, <laughs> well, let's see what you've got going, Renaissance well, you, man. You know, you know, basically how the the theme of these shows is we come in as kind of you know experts in our field, so to say, so to speak, and we show people tips or we expose something. Well, this time it's not going to be as polished. We expose something. We, yes. All right. Um, we are digital exhibitionists. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Yes. Let's move on. Yes. Yeah, so basically, this time, you know, I'm going to just kind of cover something, explore something that I think might be interesting. Okay. It could be a portent of things to come. I don't know. Is, you it, know, is it related to video in some way? It's related to vid video, but you know, kind of, you know, we've talked before and on the show as well that one of my kind of pet obsessions is this whole file based workflow, what it means for organization and archiving. Okay. With, without, with the app. Yep. of tape and there's not this thing that's in a vault somewhere that you can always go back to yeah. and the camera cards or whatever solid state media is being reused over and over again mm -hmm. you're now stuck with your stuff all your media right. on hard drives yeah. or raids or whatever and it's just accumulating and there's no real good method right and those drives can die and the technology can change and yeah and then there's the whole organization side you know okay. if, if, are you just using you know spotlight or who to spot or something like that to to find all this media mm -hmm. across drives and drives so with the advent now, or the launch, I should say, of Aperture 3, that's what I have loaded here. Again, mm -hmm. I've just downloaded the trial, and I'm just playing with this. I don't okay. even know where it's going to go, but you know, they've added video support inside of here. So uh -huh. I started thinking, well, maybe Aperture could start to become the aggregator of all of these file-based formats right. for a couple of reasons. One, you can obviously, I've got stills here. Mm -hmm. These are some Alaska stills, but also have video, which means I can come up here and I could play it. It'll actually play the video, and that's cool. Um, but in addition to just being able to access the media, kind of like iPhoto has always done, if you, mm -hmm. you know, have video in your camera or whatever, it'll import the video as well, is you know, I have metadata now. So I could come here and I could add keywords that now become associated right. with this file. So it's searchable, mm -hmm. exactly. So, you know, now in, instead of just, you know, putting them in on the finder level, I have this more robust database that I can track things. Okay. But here's where it gets kind of cool. If I go into the preferences here, what has been previously in Aperture is the, the ability to have an external photo editor. So here I've got, you know, Photoshop, the same thing that, you know, you had before, and I can send out a 16-bit PSD. But now check this out right here. External audio editor and external uh -huh. video editor. Uh -huh. So right now I've got Final Cut Pro. Now here's where it, it ceases to be, you know, exhilarating, and just maybe this is a, like I said, a portent of things to come. Okay. Because what I have here is this is video that was shot with the the 7D. You can see I've got 1920 by 1080, 2398, but it's still H.264. So not so a very it's the same form. You didn't transcode it or anything when you brought it in. Exactly. It's it's straight raw. off the card. Yeah, and okay. it did, and Aperture sucked it in uh -huh. along with the video, along with the the stills. Okay. So again, if I'm out in the field, having you know, not have to worry about oh, did I get the the video files off of there and move them to the Finder or you know what I mean? You just now took it all. Took it all in. Great. Yeah. But I'm not in a Final Cut friendly format. Right. So I thought you know when I first started playing with this, well, let's see what happens when we go and we edit with Final Cut Pro. Yes. So now it it's doing its thing, whatever it's doing here, and you know whether it's preparing another file. I thought maybe it's doing that, or it's just doing something inside of a Final. Cut cut um, that is either helpful or not so helpful. So what, what I've seen here is all it's done is open the file. Yeah, in so, a separate uh, viewer window. Yeah, but I could drag it over into the browser, ah, but check this okay. out. This is initially disappointing. Okay, so you're scrolling I'm over here, to look at the I'm here, 1920, 1080, Yeah. It's camera native. Okay. H.264. Okay, so it's not uh, re-encoding it or anything. Exactly. Or, you know, I, I know that, you know, Canon has announced that plugin, which will add the function to the file and transfer window, yes, where you yes. can kind of do your transcoding like you would yeah. do with ABC and Drone yes. and those other things. So, you know, that kind of, you know, let the air out of my exploration a little bit. Mm -hmm. Until I saw, because, I mean, maybe I could use this to do some quick screen 
meaning and maybe some in and out to know what I want to transcode. Yeah, but you don't really want to edit in that native H. No, it, it, won't, format. it won't be fun. It's not going to be. So that's when I said, well, what if I try this? What if I come here and I do preferences and I change this to compressor? And where are we? Compressor, there we go. So make Compressor the yeah. essentially the editor for yeah. that. So for example, here, let's go back to my library. And I also, when I was up in Alaska, I had a flip camera. Okay. So here's flip video. So extremely unfriendly. Mm -hmm. You know, it's mm -hmm. in this straight Strange 30p, yep. this odd format. So instead of like sending this over to Final Cut, what if I use this to aggregate all this video and then I do edit with Compressor? Uh -huh. So now I have a place that I can store all of my quote unquote masters yeah. and, and then maybe use all of all of Aperture's vault capabilities. So now I can make the duplicates. I have metadata okay. for all okay. this master. And now I edit with compressor and now I can go in here and say maybe I want to change this to ProRes or whatever. So you can you can do your conversions there. Exactly. And, and you now, could batch, you could you could open a bunch of them from Aperture yep. and Boom. have it do all of them. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I mean the reason I wanted to show this, and again, I'm still playing with it. I'd like to know, you know, the people who, who watch this, what, what would you do with this? I mean, or how are you dealing with, you know, file-based workflows? I mean, we have to, at some point, deal with the organization and archiving of all this media, and who knows, Aperture could be a good first could step. Could be a good solution, yeah. to, or one piece of the puzzle to yeah. deal with this. At, at least with this, you know, transcoding, a place to hold the masters and then transcode right. it out. And if you're, a bunch of your stuff is on hard drives that are offline, does it still keep that database and, and a reference to where that stuff is? You know, again, I'm still, still new. Still Practicing with it, with it. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, and will there be a problem if I start having uh, aperture libraries that are terabytes and terabytes? Right. I don't know. It right. would it make more sense to reference them in and things like that. You know what I mean? I don't know. We're still playing with it, and okay. we'll see. But again, I want to throw this out to the audience and see what you guys think. Very interesting. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, Brian. Sure thing. All right. Thank you for watching MacBreak Studio.